what it is hello everyone and no i am not jerome but i'm jonathan this time uh this time yeah that's right uh you heard me <laughs> and uh that is because jerome is setting up alex myself and our special guest kaylee in a special role-playing game that's right it's part two of our role-playing extravaganza part one was a while ago but this is indeed part two um we're gonna have a lot of fun jerome's gonna tell us the rules let's see where we go from here and stay tuned to the first one to die Hello, everybody. Welcome to the First Ones to Die podcast. I am your host, Jerome Rett, coming at you at 50% power. Uh, I am sick. <laughs> it's not a good play to be. It sucks. But we'll power through. Nonetheless, the ginger rail will keep us going. <laughs> it will power the rage. <laughs> so... It's a fun time. It's a, I'm excited. We're going to do uh, another edition of the First Ones to Die roleplay game. Uh, this time featuring Jonathan, who is with us. We also have Alex returning as well. And returning special guest as well, Kaylee Dambowski, is also with us. It is a fun time with friends. I'm going to start with you, Jonathan. How are you doing? How's things going? Good. Really good um what did i even do this week i got a haircut the first nice. i was telling jerome yep. off the podcast first time i've been inside the barbershop in over four years since covid i have not set foot inside a barbershop but i found one in la that i like <laughs> um yeah that's that's that and um had an event at work this weekend overall it's been chill nice yeah. i haven't i haven't really watched what have I watched? Um, oh, I started watching Night Swim. I didn't really finish it. Not because of any particular reason, just because I didn't really like, it was, it was like time to go to bed, you know? So. It's an okay movie. Yeah. I watched it. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, that's about it. But this upcoming weekend, there are a few things that I do want to watch. What's the movie? Oh, The Watchers. The Watchers. I do want to see that when it comes out this weekend. Uh, the daughter, yeah, Nipple Baby Night Central. Shyamalan. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they have they have the Night Shyamalan name plastered all over the posters and everything. Mm. Um, <laughs> Listen, she's like, to... "That's my father, and y'all gonna know it." Okay. <laughs> right. But I'm curious to see because uh, she wrote and directed it um so i'm I'm curious to see what that's like and i think she's only she's like fresh out of college too so um mm. she's a young director coming up in the horror genre maybe if it's good uh and then i also we've been talking about this movie for like the past couple months but robot dreams is going to be out in theaters this weekend at least in la i don't know about anywhere else but we'll have to double I'm check. Definitely, yeah oh i'm definitely going to see that this weekend because i've been excited about that movie it looks very i've heard it's also like a little like you might cry at it so so i'm excited to see you be prepared for emotion right no i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> you already lost alex yeah, I'm out. <laughs> alex how are you doing how was your week i've been good i got a little sick myself this week um some like a little I, I think it was like mild food poisoning or something i'm not sure but like for like four days i couldn't consume anything and anything i did consume was just right out of me so that was super fun to deal with but i'm doing a lot better and um nothing too major going on i watched exorcist exorcist believers with the two little girls I made jokes more than anything regarding this movie. So uh it it was like okay. Uh I Yo, want that to watch... scene when that little girl took out her dad <laughs> in her room. Oh yeah, well you just like out of nowhere. That was like a secret move. <laughs> Most of that. Me and my sister both work in hospital settings. Well, I work more in clinical. She works as a security officer in an emergency room. And when those little girls first come into the emergency room, she's like, I don't know what I would do. 
She's like, if I saw little girls just tapping at the window, you know, staring at each other from across the room or like looking like the way they did. She, I was like, I would leave. I'd be like, call in the <laughs> other guy. I'm not staying for this. See, I don't even believe this in that is what stuff. I said during our episode. Look, when I said I reactions to demon possession. Just leave. This is yeah, outside like, your wheelhouse. House. You can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, they pay me for a lot, but not demon possession. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Like those when she's like, there's a part where they take her to the mental institution. Um, the because there's a black a black little girl and a white little girl. The black little girl, she's like foaming at the mouth and like <laughs> her skin's rotting. And I'm like, no, I'm not dealing with that. That's not you. You, I understand you pay me to deal with you know certain type of mental patients, but not that one. That one, devil. Absolutely, <laughs> um, I do want to watch the first Omen, which is like the prequel to The Omen, came out on Hulu, and I've been wanting to watch that. Although I heard not great things about it, but I still kind of want to see it, so I might watch that. And then, um, I'm gonna try to now look for Robot Dreams. I do want to see that movie. It looks cute too. Mm -hmm. it just looks cute, and hopefully they'll, they're showing it somewhere in Seattle. But other than that, um. Nothing too exciting. Uh, I'm still building my Lego set that I showed you guys from last week or a couple weeks ago with the sun and the earth. I got the sun and the little arm built, but I still got to build the earth. He's He's been delayed until I stop feeling so nauseous. <laughs> How about you, Jerome? How you doing? Oh, you know. Surviving <laughs> and surviving. Fair enough. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> no, I'm doing okay. Outside of the sickness, I'm doing okay. Um, media news stuff don't have is a little light today. Uh, for the most part, um, number one, uh, got a new trailer for Venom Three or Venom: The Last Dance, as it's called. Uh, and it looks like Venom. I mean, if you've seen the Venom movies, <laughs> it I looks saw like that. a lot of the same. <laughs> but I heard they finally like make Venom and Eddie's like relationship proper canon. It'll never be proper. Canon I don't know. Spider Man's not in the movies because that is a big part of it. <laughs> Them being in a relationship? No, like they don't have a relationship. Their relationship is There's we hate some... Spider Man. Well, Eddie hates Peter <laughs> they, Parker. Who they is do have a weird by relationship. We hate Spider -Man. That is the 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 crux of their relationship. Is what helps them bond even stronger together. Is we hate Spider Man, and Spider Man's not in any any of the Venom movies. So you're telling me they didn't truly bond in that last one? No, they didn't become like. I haven't seen the second one. I liked the first one gay. too. The first hey, one's okay. Happy the second Pride one's Month. Trash. Right. The third one yeah. looks like it might be okay. It looks like a little bit of more of a return to form. But I don't know. I feel like because Venom has had his own comics before, like where he's his own independent character. So it's not like you can't make a Venom movie without Spider Man. It's just that the origin of what makes Venom Venom comes from Spider Man. Like why he moves the way he moves, the spider symbol on his chest. All that comes directly from Spider-Man. And since Spider-Man's not in these movies, it just feels weird. Um, but, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, I look at them like I do, like, the Venom comics that came out back in, like, the 90s with Lethal Protector and stuff like that, where Venom was on his own, doing his own thing in San Francisco, and Spider-Man was in New York. Uh, so it's just, like, it looks okay. It, lo it doesn't look bad. It just looks okay. <laughs> Also, uh, things I've watched, I watch Furiosa, uh, Mad Max uh, Saga or whatever it's called. How is um, that? It's good. It, it is right. good. However, I think the issue with the movie is that if you're going hoping to see a Furiosa movie, I mean, you will get that in the bottom half. Uh, the first half, Furiosa's there, but she's not definitely not the star. Because <laughs> Chris Hemsworth... <laughs> Bummer bulldozes this fucking movie <laughs> for a large part of it with his performance. And he's great. He's a great performer in the whole movie. Um, but he really is like, it feels, a lot of the movie feels like he's the star of the film. And that's mainly because Furiosa doesn't talk for a large part of the film. So you don't really get a lot. And it, like, and it reminds me, it, like someone, I was talking to someone else about it and someone was like, you know what this feels like? This feels like they did to Furiosa, what they like, what uh, happened to Mad Max in Fury Road, where Mad Max was the main character, but Furiosa bulldozed over him because she was so charismatic and so cool and badass. And so people really loved Furiosa. And really, it was like a Furiosa movie featuring Mad Max, 
This time around, it's the Furiosa movie, but it feels like uh, Dr. Dementis, who's Chris Hemsworth's character, his movie featuring Furiosa. <laughs> and then when he isn't there, there's another character who also shows up, who also kind of takes a lot of uh, attention on the screen. And so it's just like a thing where it's like weird. Uh, and so Furiosa doesn't really get a lot to do as far as like commanding the, the action, commanding the scene until the back half of the movie. It's really weird. Uh, but overall, it's still good. The action still looks really cool. A lot more CG this time around than in Fury Road. But it's not too distracting. Like most of it is still pretty much practical. Um, like in Fury Road. And uh, a lot of the costumes still look great. The characters and the world building is still really good. So overall, it's still a pretty good movie. It's just a lot. And it's a lot slower <laughs> than Fury Road, Fury Road was. Like a lot slower. And uh, my dad did not have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because Mad Max wasn't in the movie. <laughs> I'm like, it's not a Mad Max movie. It just takes place in the same universe. Mad Max is not in there. But uh, also because it was really slow. Like it, the movie, this movie is a lot more methodical. They take a lot more time because uh, you really do get to see Furios's origin from when she's like a preteen girl to when she's like a full grown woman. So it's it's very slow. Um, but if you're along for the ride, it can be fun. And it's in 40X. So if you want to add a little bit of a. Did like you watch a, it in 40X? No, but I wish I had a little bit. <laughs> uh, I feel sure? like it would have been a lot of wind. Around. It's in the desert a lot. You didn't like getting sprayed fire. in the face with water? Uh, I mean, maybe, Ooh. but probably more fire than anything else. A lot of heat. There's a lot of fire in the movie. So probably Anytime I come back up to Seattle, we need to watch a 40X movie because that was, that was fun when we watched Indiana Jones. <laughs> That one yeah. rattled me so much more than I thought. I almost fell out of my seat. They really put that poor old I'm man through shit. Because yeah, they're they're like, we're going to get him through. We're going to do Those theaters we really do pack a punch because I've only been to one that did it. And I saw like the first Star Wars uh, Ooh, one. Yeah. And it was like every time a spaceship was going off, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Twisters is coming to 40X. I feel like Twisters. Oh, that's gonna be fun. That would be that's good. Be fun. Oh, that'll be fun. Why is the Garfield movie in 40X? <laughs> right. What is he? What is Garfield what doing? What is happening there guy? that we don't know about? The lasagna is real. <laughs> I guess you just smell that. Mondays all are coming at you. <laughs> if they put that smell like just in the in the theater at all times, I would I would just genuinely vomit. I was Sorry, like, oh I, was, God. Now, what <laughs> <you say? laughs> I was I was tempted to I was tempted to see the Garfield movie this weekend just because I had a craving for the movie Nachos. So I just <laughs> wanted to see a movie because of that. So I was gonna see anything. I was tempted to see the Garfield movie, but I didn't end up doing it. But this next weekend, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch two. So I'd I'll be my... more impressed if it was like a flex, like you went into a movie theater just to buy the nachos. You yeah. know, it's like the person who I... goes to like a venue just for the gift shop, like they don't even actually like Is to it? go through the thing. Yo, like... I that, like people do that at the Mopop all the time. People would come in and be like, "I'm just here to get to the gift shop," which I'm like. And we we've, we've made it accessible where people can just go to the gift shop. I'm like, I don't know why more places don't okay. do this. Like, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. This. Like, I feel like if Jonathan did that, like, wow, what a flex, you know? <laughs> like, I'm just here for the nachos. Because <laughs> if it's like a theme park or something, you have to order it online, mm. or like you can't just go to the go to the gift shop. And I'm like, what if you just live there? Like, not not the theme park, but like around the area, you could just, like you could just go and be like, I just want to go to the gift shop. I've been to the park and have the money then. Would you, wouldn't you just want to be able to have make the gift shop accessible? Because like, even just like, oh shit, I need a gift. Oh, here's a gift shop. And just like run in and grab something. Mm -hmm. Right. That way it's better. And it's like, yeah, I got it from the Mopop. Look at that. Yep. It's all lies. But uh, yeah, sorry. My audio is all janky. But anyway, so that's my week. That's pretty <laughs> much all there is. Oh, actually, last thing in media news. We don't have to talk about this for long. But I think it's just, it's just funny. Is, uh. We have uh, our, our once and uh, former president has been uh, found <laughs> guilty on, on all 34 counts of his crimes. Uh, I forget in what state in a court case. And it has just been hilarious to see him floundering like a fish trying to recover. And I wish I had his level of strength 
to paddle down the river of denial that he has dug for himself because he just refuses to believe that it's just slightly that he's been guilty. I still refuse to believe it. I don't trust it. I no, listen, no, it's it's no. confirmed. It's like that that's done. No, it's now confirmed, that but like is where we're at. Now I don't know what the sentence is gonna be. I don't think the sentence is gonna be heavy. Like no, I doubt like, like, it's like, time. I'm like you know what? It's not until the sentencing is complete that I'll believe it. That I'll believe those charges stick and everything. Right now well, I'm like, I'm like, like I like it, but like I'm still watching. They were saying like because this is his first offense and he's like eighty five or however old he is, that he probably won't <laughs> Face. <laughs> he probably won't face. Is 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 he eighty five? How old is he? I don't he? think so. I don't, I don't think, think so. he's eighty. I genuinely don't know. I don't know. Those arteries have got to be older than he is. Heavy. The way he eats oh, trash food. <laughs> okay, I was like, I was like, <laughs> wait, what? how old? Seventy seven. Well, that's still not great. I, I'm just saying he he definitely ate healthy, man. Like. Fair. <laughs> I feel like that's a fair assessment to accidentally mistake him for someone yeah. well into his 80s. All I'm saying is I'm waiting till the sentencing before I before I believe anything. I don't trust our government, our court system. <laughs> but it's just, yeah. So we'll see how this affects the election. I think me personally, as a person who loves to debate and argue... If I was going to the debates for the uh, National Republican Convention, you better believe I'm throwing this shit in his face every time he has uh, something to say. He's like, like, like every time he's just like, well, I say 34, but but I 30 plus four. <laughs> Girl, I don't I have money fighting. to bail you out of jail. You know, like, <laughs> they would definitely well, take I, you in. They would find any reason if, to take if you if in. I was, if I was on uh, Joe Biden's uh, political team, I would just uh, on or on and around election day, I'd be taking a whole bunch of pictures of Joe Biden going to the polls to vote and the caption would be like, all right, I'm going to exercise my free American right to vote. Can't say the same for other people, but. (laughs) 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 Because as a felon, he's not able to vote. That's true. He's not able to vote because he's been convicted of a crime. But yeah, so that's 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 my week in a nutshell. Kaylee, how have you been? <laughs> Welcome I back. Finally. Hard transition there, Jerome. That's right. <laughs> that's how hey, we do it welcome here. Back. Welcome back, Kaylee. We miss you. We, we literally spend Thanks, every so. single podcast screaming the word socials before we tell us talk about our social media tags. So <laughs> we're all about yeah. it here. <laughs> but how have you been? Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Excited to be here. I've just been having a pretty chill week. Been playing my Stardew Valley. And uh, let's see. I started watching Ripley on Netflix, which I didn't realize is basically like the plot of Saltburn so far, but like less sexy. (laughs) I mean, I guess I'll hold out for the whole... Is for the whole like the, season, but is it like the movie The Talents of Mr. Ripley? Is it like uh I think I don't know. Uh the person I, I was watching it with way. said that it's based off like a previous Ripley. I don't know if it's based off a movie or what, but it's like black and white in the 1950s. Hmm. The whole show is in black and white. And I got to say, too, I am glad I was watching it with a person because it is so awkward. It is very cringe. <laughs> it is maximum oh, cringe. Andrew Scott in there. I love Andrew Scott. Yeah. <laughs> well, OK, so it's it's not based off of the movie, The Talented Mr. Ripley, but the book that that movie is based off of is what the tv series is based off of yeah so it's like another adaptation of the same book yeah Mm -hmm. it's interesting so far but i'm only three episodes in so i guess i can't say for sure but it reminds me a lot of watching salt burn but uh so far a little less sexy (laughs) (laughs) although to be fair the main actor who's in it 
I haven't seen him in anything, but someone was telling me that he's also in the show Fleabag. And yeah, one of my friends have... has been trying to get me to watch Fleabag like hardcore Special. because she's like hot priest. Absolutely. Kaylee, you gotta watch it with a hot priest. Absolutely. And I'm like, all right. So yeah, you have yeah. religious trauma like me. So you will absolutely yeah, love exactly. Fleabag so much. Mainly the second season. First season, and yeah. Because that was with the B- BBC. The second yeah. season was and bought by Amazon Prime. Second season. Yeah. You do yes. get to see his body in the in Ripley and, and in Fleabag he, too. He is very fit, I will say. <laughs> he's looking good. He's but, got some yeah. very sharp features, but he's Andrew Scott. I like him. Yeah. So so far it's pretty good. I'm excited to see where it goes. But like like I said, I definitely I need like a chaperone to watch with me because I don't do cringe very well. And if I was watching this by myself, I would have to take so many pause breaks. I would like, oh, it's like anytime something that awkward happens, I would I would have to like leave physically leave the room or something. <laughs> so there's a lot of awkward moments in this show. Mm. <laughs> oh, and as a throwback, I watched um the original Death Race and I watched the death race Ooh. with Jason Statham. Oh. So I did that this week. Arnold Schwarzenegger, or not Arnold, uh, sorry, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah. The, the, that one. And I will say, it was like way raunchier than I was expecting it to be, and the camera oh, yeah. work, but the camera work was also really surprising for the era that it's from. And it's also weird because like, Obviously, it's like an, the new one is an homage to the original, but like they're totally different plots. Yeah, they're different movies but entirely. They're like, <laughs> like the first one has a plot that's like basically, what if Grand Theft Auto was a movie? Like <laughs> they're just like the whole point of the game is they try and like hit civilians for points. Yes, yeah, dystopian futuristic type game, like like the Running Man or something. Yeah. Um, the movie. <laughs> yeah. And uh our old coworker Andrew was doing like a watch along, so I watched it there. And then after I watched it, um I was like, "Oh, I guess I need to watch the Jason Statham one." And I watched the Jason Statham one, and I got to tell you, it's the whole plot of that one is like, "What if Mario Kart had murder?" <laughs> <laughs> I might play like, Mario Kart a little more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was into it. I'm into both versions, all right? I already, like, I don't know why this isn't a series. HBO needs to pick this up. I need so I need there more. is a series of movies. There are, like, the Death Race sequels are, se- are or rather, pre-sequels. They are, uh, so, the you know, the first, the, the one with Jason Statham was, I guess, popular enough that they justified making more Death Race movies in that series. But yeah. those movies are prequels to the death race movie jason statham telling the story of the guy who was frankenstein yeah. before him and all that stuff i and, briefly uh, looked into it and all i know is the sequels after the jason statham one apparently all have like danny treo in it yes so i'm yep. still kind of like well danny maybe Trejo. love danny <laughs> Trejo. Yeah, i know i was like it. Well, maybe I'd watch that for Danny Trejo. <laughs> I've heard they're not good. I love the love we have for Danny like, Trejo. They, in this they're podcast. all straight to DVD, mm-hmm. like yeah. Movies, but they're they're they exist. There is a series of Death that's, Race movies based that's off. That's the that vibe one. I kind of had for it. Was I was kind of like, well, this gives like they kind of were really not doing their best uh, to make a plot out of this. But like they did get Danny Trejo, and I will like stand Danny right Trejo. Back. So <laughs> Danny Trejo always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like you could make a truly terrible movie. I'll at least consider watching it if it's got Danny Trejo. I'm just saying. That's fair. Really ups the bar there. <laughs> yeah. So that's been my week. Pretty chill. Nice. Well, speaking Sorry, of my games, about to die. Wait, 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 really quick, really quick, really quick. Yes. It's gonna be Kaylee's birthday this week. Yeah. Hey. So I wanted to say happy birthday. Thank Appreciate you. Birthday. Happy early birthday. Yeah, that's coming up this week. It's sneaking in there. 
I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. All right, you can do your intro now. Okay. Yeah. Well, now that we've just off of that now, the, the, like yeah. Kaylee set me up for a perfect transition, and now it's now it's. Ruined. I'm sorry. I wanted to wish our friend a happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, the role play yeah. game. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been playing Stardew Valley. Speaking of games, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're doing the role play game, and for those who are old time fans, we did this way back in the early days of the first ones to die um podcast and it's back yet again in honor of speaking of birthdays as well it is the podcast's birthday well it's actually passed it was june 1st is when the podcast turned four years old we're almost in kindergarten Five. age folks no first was to die turned four hours oh like, my hour god we have no. this thing podcast every year like podcast we all started all right. back in 2019 under a different name although in 2020 before the pandemic we, well, at the end of like 2019, we changed into this. All right. So it's all a mix. It's four to five. How we, about that? We rebranded, but we're, we've been together five years. All right. This is true. We've been Don't together the year. five years as hosts. And it has felt like five years. <laughs> I feel like Jonathan is counting the years like, y'all dating and jerome's counting like the years of marriage you know like like when <laughs> someone's like mind. when you when's your anniversary and like you get two different <laughs> results <laughs> <laughs> or like the first meet versus the first date versus the first yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, first month together all this stuff and right. i don't remember anything <laughs> But yeah, so it's the podcast anniversary, and so in honor of that, we are doing another role-play game. Uh, same rules virtually as last time, with a few added tweaks. Uh, number one, there's no ghost lines this time around, so don't uh, anticipate a bunch of ghosts rolling around. And also, secondly, there's uh, extra lives, only by one, for all of our players involved. And also, the map is a secret to even them. So they don't even know where they're going to be. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give a breakdown of the rules. Firstly, there's going to be two phases. There's a move phase and action phase. The move phase is going to be uh, a chance for our players to go from room to room to investigate for tools, opportunities, and dangers. Things that could help them or things that could, you know, not help them. And an action phase in which they get to use said items. The monster in question will also have these opportunities as well. So it'll be a race to see who will survive the night, or in this, you know, the night being 10 rounds of the game. <laughs> and it's going to be a fun time. So I'm excited. I am prepared. I am ready. Uh, are you guys excited and prepared and ready? Ready to go? I'm ready. Yeah. Ready All as right. we'll ever be. But just imagine Moody Noir S jazz music. <laughs> like, yo, kind of, kind of stuff. On a cold and stormy night. All three of you, and by the way, you're playing as uh, yourselves. I mean, if you want to be someone else, you can, but you know, just, just if you'd like to just be yourself, you're more than welcome to. The three of you have been. Uh, cordially invited to a special event at a art museum uh, located in a mysterious location. Uh, it is a very exclusive party. The reputation of this art museum is very distinguished. Anybody who gets invited is definitely a person who is going to have a great story to tell because they'll get to see something that is so exclusive, even the richest of the rich might not get an opportunity to see what is displayed at this museum on your invitation it says come and prepare yourself for the return of the great artist alexa pascala as she unveils her newest art collection fahrenheit blue pieces filled with beauty intrigue mystery and horror one night only at salvador's art gala which is the location you each arrive and you go inside and you're in a lobby and you see other different 
disparate people as well as waiters and waitresses with little party favors and snacks and things on silver platters walking around and feeding in fact as soon as you walk in the door they're like you know hors d'oeuvres wine you know that sort of thing uh for you to drink and uh, actually one in particular uh who comes and gives you the wine does present it to all three of you do you drink the wine yeah it's <laughs> Sure. It's free yeah. alcohol, right? Wait, I ask if it's free alcohol. <laughs> it is indeed free. Yes. Then yes. <laughs> the answer is definitely yes. Because I'm yeah. playing as myself. <laughs> sure. If everyone else is doing it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. Peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex, did you say yes as well? I did. Okay. Be honest with me, yes. So you drink the wine. And uh, you you continue on inside. Inside of the atrium, which is uh, the location of this kind of li lobby area, you see a myriad of art pieces from around the world. Immaculate carvings and statues from Russia, beautiful art pieces from all over Europe, skillfully woven rugs from Africa, etc. Like different art pieces from around the world have been seen here that probably uh, have never been seen in other locations before. But as far as like being put on display and very rare items and things like that and the onlookers that are with you are just these uh look like random possibly like uh art dealers or art buyers or things like that you know just random people and then also among them is also these like people that are in what looks like jumpsuits like they're kind of just they're kind of just like uh look almost like you know like those engineering jumpsuit type things and they're just kind of also there in like these all blue engineering jumpsuits, but they're not like the wait staff or anything. You know, despite this uh, art gallery gallery being called Fahrenheit Blue, they don't look like they're really a part of the show. They're just around, in the, and there's a lot of them and stuff like that. Um, by the way, if you want to talk to people and stuff, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I'm just narrating, giving you the the scene and the setting. So, anyway. All the art bestowed on the walls and floating on, uh, also floating on little, like, what look like hover displays. It's really an, uh, an illusion of the, uh, of the eyes, but it makes it look like all, some of the paintings and stuff are floating and stuff. And they're all behind, like, plated glass. And there's different, uh, also age ranges of some of the patrons, too. Some of them look like they're probably teenagers to older people who look like they're in, like, their 80s and and you know and older possibly everything is going great you know everyone's having a good time mingling talking chilling out and as the night starts to wind down after about an hour or so you know everyone's gotten a chance to get inside get some snacks all those things you hear a hello and it's and and it coming uh, coming out onto what looks like uh, the middle center of the floor and a spotlight shines on a man dressed in like a uh, very like colorful garb and very uh decorative uh jacket and with a like uh curly mustache like curly on the tips and stuff like that he looks very salvador dali type esque looking guy uh which is fitting because this is salvador <laughs> who walks out <laughs> and he's just like welcome my friends colleagues and respected associates Welcome to my crown jewel, my passion, my holy grail. Welcome to my gala. Pause for applause. <laughs> like I thank you all for coming. For tonight is truly special. Tonight we unveil not only the newest art collection from the beautiful and talented Alexa Pascala, but we also celebrate her triumphant return after 11 years of inactivity since her tragic accident in New Mexico. Now, we shall be opening the curtain soon. But in the meantime, enjoy the company of my fellow servers. And uh, Salvador claps his hands and the server, more servers come out with more snacks and drinks, wine, juice, all that stuff. And uh, eventually, you know, Gibson shows up randomly as well. <laughs> this is at an now art gallery. Of course he's there. <laughs> uh, as the night continues, the lights dim and the back wall flickers. And with a holographic glow as it fades, it reveals 
the curtain that uh, Salvador mentioned, which is just this large blue, almost like velvety textured curtain. And a projection plays on the adjacent wall to the curtain. And uh, and uh, as the art seems to almost like move by itself, like the art pieces kind of just seem like they're shifting, like they're moving out of the way. And to make wall space, and on the projection, numbers start ticking down. And then finally, once it hits zero, we see the face of Alexa Pascala. And Alexa Pascala looks like very uh, gorgeous. She looks like this um, Audrey Hepburn esque, like beautiful woman. Clearly, like yeah, from like something like uh, a woman who's like from, straight out of the 1930s film era. Just like beautiful makeup, fair weather skin, uh, beautiful hair, perfectly coiffed, all that stuff. And she says. In my life, I had only two loves, the beautiful, complex dream made real we call the stars and art. A mistress so unfathomably gorgeous, she is the only woman I'd ever make love to. But alas, I have found myself in a place where I'm no longer able to feel her touch, no longer capable of being who I once was. And then the film stops, and the spotlight comes on to show Salvador uh, bringing Alexa onto the, onto the floor. And Alexa is there, but now she has an eye patch over her eye, and she has a large scar on her face, and the scars actually on, around her face in various places. And uh, she also has like what looks like damage to her throat, and she has a uh, a little like you know those things that uh, smokers use to speak when they have like a, a trachea in their oh, throat buddy. or uh, not trachea. <laughs> in their throat whatever that's called. She has one of those, but it doesn't look like that's what the reason is. It doesn't look like she was a smoker and that's what caused it. It looks like something else happened to her voice requiring her to have to use that. And uh, she speaks and she's like, now I am this, a woman broken and pieced together by science's cruel reality. But in my time of darkness, I found something unfathomably spectacular. I found a new muse, a new dream. And in doing so, began to find the art once more. So, without waiting, wondering, and questioning, let us gather and marvel at my love affair with my mistress once again. Welcome to Fahrenheit Blue. Curtain opens, revealing the other enormous end of the atrium. The roof that seems to go on forever, and the floor has blue rugs that cover it completely, except for the neon strips that are also blue on the side of the wall, you know, lighting up the walls behind the art. Uh, but the amazement comes from the walls, covered from top to bottom with beautiful art pieces, all painted blue, from paintings of rivers, oceans, and blue skies to normal items that aren't naturally blue, but are painted with different shades of blue. However, also found in each of the paintings are weird figures from creatures that look humanoid but have mangled or deformed faces to things with more than one leg or arm. All the paintings have this, some giant, some normal size, but they all have creatures in them that are odd or terrifying. But nobody seems to be off, uh, be put off from them, rather intrigued, amazed, and calling them beautiful. And so they each affect you in a different way as you look at them. And so I'm going to, let me see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to do a roll for each of you, because each of you are going to get a different experience from watch, from looking at one of the paintings. So I'm going to start with you, Kaylee. All right. Number six. Kaylee, you walk over and you see a painting with the title, The Blue Fish. Excuse me. Ginger ale burps. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> The painting is of a fish using arms to swim coming towards the viewer of the painting. To fish, The fish then begins to swim to the person. Like it's almost like the, the painting comes alive and it actually is coming towards you, swimming at you. Once it gets to the edge of the painting, it grabs you and pulls your head into the water. You begin to drown and can't breathe. Oh God! But you notice <laughs> the water is now... Again. Is now <laughs> They have webbed feet and hands and gills. Not to mention they are also missing their eyes as their socketed heads are staring back at the at you as they're drowning. Then a gray, gangly hand reach out 
reaches out and grabs you by the head and pulls your eyes out. They then notice that they, uh, Jeez. like yeah. after, like you wake back up Whoa. <laughs> snap, and you have a fever and you're sitting on the ground, staring off into nothing, but the painting looks, goes back to looking normal. Rough. Well, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, your turn. Please. All right. Have fun. <laughs> Good luck, Jonathan. <laughs> I'm sorry for your experience, Damn. Haley. Wow. That's... Thank you. I feel validated. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, your painting is the astronaut. You're walking and you see the painting like called the, with the title that calls the astronaut. For the now. painting is of an astronaut sitting on the moon, <laughs> staring at the Earth from behind. Ooh. So you're you're sitting okay. and you're looking at like from behind him. You see the astronaut staring at the Earth while he's sitting on the moon. As you stare, all sound in the room dissipates and you hear nothing, not even your own voice. Then the astronaut's head turns 180 degrees without turning at all. Just his whole head turns completely around and stares at you. Right. He then opens his visor to reveal that he is a creature made of worms, and they fall out of the helmet through the opening of the what where the visor used to be. What two is? eyes pop out to stare at the person as more worms keep filing out. Two eyeballs just distant Jesus. without a face to connect to them. <laughs> But with words. And then the astronaut with its backward hand waves at you. At that moment, you stop breathing because you're in space now. And you, as you're gasping for air, the worms envelop you and drive you into the ground, suffocating you as you like. <laughs> and you have a like as you wake up from this trance, you start coughing uncontrollably as if you're trying to gasp for air and you're trying to catch your breath. That's your experience. So this is all <laughs> form of not breathing. Are you trying to suffocate all of us oh with water God. or worms? The all real right, question Alex, is: Did you wave back to the astronaut? <laughs> to you? Good point. Is that the I trick did, in here? Did, is that how was, you escape? <laughs> I probably did, but it was like a confused wave. Like I don't know why I'm waving, but. <laughs> Yeah, when that thing waves it was the wave the that darkness, caused the suffocation. Like, That's what it was. <laughs> just like have to wave back and be like, "Please be friendly," as worms are coming out of your face. Wow, Alex, uh, what number? What like graphic suffocation are you going to experience? <laughs> Bring it on! What number? You get the lighthouse of dreams. Ooh. You're like you walk into a painting and you. <laughs> A very large painting on the wall called the lighthouse of dreams the painting is of a lighthouse that sits alone on an alien planet shining a green light into the darkness as you stare at the lighthouse the light begins to actually turn and flash in your eyes each time the light passes there's a different display in the painting at first one person then four then 18 then more and more and more Eventually, there's an army, and the frame can no longer hold the amount of people. All the people are nondescriptive and covered in what looks like, uh, <laughs> covered in what looks to be black latex suits, like black leather, skin tight to the toes, tight enough to make sure someone. But these people are unaffected. You can see almost it's so tight. In fact, you can almost see their skeletons and their skulls, like trying to break through the seal because it's that tight. I don't think that's in his Dominica tricks. <laughs> then in the last flash, the army appears outside the painting surrounding you. You try to run or fight, but either way, you get taken down and are pulled into the painting. They eventually, like you eventually get pulled in and are put in the black bags that they are wrapped in, in itself. And it just swarms around you and grips you to be just as skin tight as ha they have it around their bodies as they force you into a black suit. You then lie on the floor, like you then wake up on the floor, paralyzed with fear for only a moment. Unsure yeah, of what. Only a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's more, they got more work cut out for them than I do, trying to get all this <laughs> into a bodysuit like that. Oh my God. Painting As movies. Our patrons, which is you three, recover from their visions. The ground begins to shake as if it was an earthquake. And then the sound of what seems to be an engine can be heard, and then it stops. The air is still. 
until out of nowhere, the ceiling is ripped off, and straight above is the beaming green light of something. As one looks out the window, they can see that the green light extends out, and the building itself is being is lifting off the ground. The building lifts up into the source of the green light, and a flash of light happens, and you guys find yourself in a dark and gloomy room. And as you're kind of pittering around, trying to figure out where you are and what's happened, Alexa speaks up and says, Do not be afraid. I expected this to happen. I was hoping they would come. And the door opens, and you really, you are in what looks like... Oh, Alex is gone. <laughs> the door opens and Alex leaves. <laughs> Alex, Alex is like, gone! I'm out! I'm out! And yeah, she's like, bye! <laughs> <laughs> she saw that door open and she said, let me walk out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The door opens. <laughs> Alex, you left just as he said the door opens. <laughs> <laughs> the door opens and Alex walks out of me. I just, I was, I saw a door open on itself and I was like, I'm gonna, bye, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> the door opens and out comes uh, what looks like a large gray matter type figure with big black eyes they're 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 kind of like like almost like black licorice they're just like stone black and gray hands with extremely long fingers and tendrils and just walks in and starts examining you and he just like has these little like extended tentacles come off of his back and the tentacles come and grab various people who are in the crowd with you and he takes them and alexa like from the light that comes from the doorway, you can see that on her face is this look of intrigue and and kind of like this just like like in awe of this this creature. And he just starts collecting people up and then he walks out, leaving you, Salvador, and Alexa in the room together. And Salvador is looking around just like, What on earth was that? And Alexa says, it was my muse. My dream. <laughs> Crazy bitch. And <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, Salvador is way too calm. He clearly did not get a suffocation painting. Okay? <laughs> He's way too fucking chill right now if that's his reaction to this. <laughs> or did he have something else than wine? Because if he did, I wouldn't mind some. Yeah, should yeah. I have gotten a beer? What happened? <laughs> Funny enough, she says, uh, Alexa does follow that up by saying, uh, after she says, like, my dream, she says, she looks at you and she sees your faces and uh, you can't see this because, you know, you're not looking at yourselves. But in your eyes, each, all three of you have a bluish hue to your eyes. And she says, and Salvador doesn't. And she says, ah, Excellent. You can see them as well. You can see. I, like, uh, and Salvador says, what the devil are you talking about? She says, the paintings, the wine, it was all planned. It was all put together so that uh, the patrons, all of them could admire what I, what, uh, what happened, the, the beauty, the magic of it all. Come, come, come. You, we must find this creature. I have wanted, wished, to be back in this place for so long. And now I've brought people with me who can prove what I saw was real, who can tell the world what I saw was real. And uh, she goes immediately to the door and uh, starts gagging and just like, like she's regurgitating something and she regurgitates out after a while this uh, device that she has. And she puts it onto the door and it looks foreign. It looks very alien and weird. It's kind of like constantly moving around and goopy and, and, and weird, but it does 
open the door. It almost like it almost looks like kind of like thermite. How thermite like burns like a door or whatever, and then it just opens. Same thing here. It kind of burns the door, and then the door just kind of disintegrates, and the door is open to you. And Alexa steps out, and she is uh, at first very like proud of herself. She's like, "Come, we don't have much time." We have to find that. And as she says, as she's talking, she gets interrupted as the creature returns. And he stares at her. And she is admiring him. And she's like, you know, doing her thing. And then the creature proceeds to uh, pick her up with his tentacles very softly, very gingerly. You know, like he's, he's just like examining her. After a while, he like, he's at first, what goes from amazement becomes disgust as he then rips her in half using his tentacles like using her limbs as the like starting point <laughs> lord but alexa dies oh. and then this creature try like uh he takes the pieces and he leaves and salvador looks at you and says we need to get the hell out of here and he immediately <laughs> he just runs he leaves you all three of you behind <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't no we. No we in that statement. It was a royal we. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is where we enter into the game in which you guys are now in Fahrenheit Blue, as this game is called. And so here's where you are. You are in the containment chamber here. And you and the goal of this game, just like the last one, is to escape. Or kill the monster. You are currently in the containment chamber here in the bottom. Main chamber is the big area where uh, that you can kind of see into. And there are other areas that you can get to. But you've just got to, you know, figure it out. And so I'm going to... Let's see. I'm going to roll for each one of you to decide who goes first. And who goes... Uh, and what the turn order is going to be. So... Okay, so according to the roles of fate, it goes Alex, Kaylee, Jonathan. So Alex, you're first. Where do you go? What do you do? Where am I exactly? So you're in this room. Here. Okay. And so uh, just tell me, like, if you want to go, like, uh, I guess in this case, we have one, two. We have two doors on the left. We have three doors on the right and the one just opposite. All the way up. Now remember, you have your your, your move, and us. I'm gonna say, actually, the main chamber is its own thing. So actually, I'm gonna start you all here in the main chamber. So I'm gonna say you all leave the containment chamber room. Okay. And you all are in the main chamber. So uh, so yeah, and then like you know, you can use your move action to move to one of these uh, six doors. Give and me. The third door on the left that no second door on the left that uh weird little curve thing going on this one seems like fun yeah okay you move go over to this one and you find yourself in the engine room in the engine room is basically uh is basically a cavalcade of what looks like alien engines and machinery you have no clue what you're looking at because this does not look like anything that is from earth at all but it's definitely uh like interesting it's all like worrying with like what looks like tesla coils and uh, like or you know what you can equate anyway to tesla coils electricity things firing like synapses firing all types of stuff and so that's what you're seeing in in this room it's just what looks like what you can surmise is what's powering this vessel that you're on that you're traveling through okay also sorry i also forgot to mention in the main chamber is also the big hatch that is the probe hatch where you guys were beamed up through as well probe hatch um i guess let me take a look around the room Oh well, do you, I'm sorry. Do you look for a tool, an opportunity, or a danger in the engine room? Let's look for an opportunity. I feel like the engine room might be a good place. 
as you're looking around in the engine room, you see that there is what looks like, you know, you don't you can't read the alien language per se, but you know what the what an emergency bus button looks like. And lucky for you, this alien also likes to label them in red. So, <laughs> love it. You uh, see a button that to you looks like it could be an emergency shutdown. As you go to try and interact with it just to make sure that you're correct, you see that there's also what looks like kind of like a combination, like a code combination. So, like it like you presume that it could be that you need a sequence or a certain set of symbols that you need to type in first before you can actually use this button. But you now know where this is and you know that it's in the engine room. So for the sake of trying to like, you know, this is round one of ten. If you think you can stop the ship, maybe like that could help you get a chance to like delay how much time you'll need to try and get get back home. Cool. My mom always did say push random buttons until something works. <laughs> Kaylee, your turn. Where do you go? Also, for the list audio listening audience, there is a whole map that we are looking at as well. So uh, if you want to get the true experience of what's going on in the roleplay game, go on over to the YouTube channel. You can check it out and see what we're looking at. But go ahead, Kaylee. Where, where are you going? Uh, can I look in this room? In the room we're yeah. already in? Absolutely. So in the main chamber, you are... Uh, is basically like it's just a big cylindrical hallway but there is like seemingly like you know like what looks like the paneling that is holding all this together the pro patch in particular is really interesting because it has like the remnants of what was left from the museum that was beamed up so there's some of the like old uh remnants of the paintings that kind of like fell apart as the building was getting pulled up but they're all still there and due to alexa's meddling with the wine and stuff like the some of the paintings that she made there's still like remnants of those visions that you're still quite seeing due to your chemistry not as like put acid in the wine because that kind of feels <laughs> no, like, like, like acid in the wine. they're not as horrific as the uh as what you uh experienced when you actually my, like my fish is just coming out a little bit <laughs> but yeah like like small twitches of things and stuff like that you know like almost like seeing like a video on loop but it's looping like back, like in the middle. So it's just <laughs> it, 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 like that kind of thing is what you're seeing in some of the, in some it's, of the paintings. It's just the right. astronaut waving <laughs> in loop. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's what's in the main chamber. Uh, I'm going to say that was your, because you don't have to move if you don't want to. But I will say, uh, do you use, like, what do you search? Do you search in this main chamber for a tool opportunity and or danger? Uh, I would or like, which one I get rather? I would like to search for a tool because I feel like I don't want to go into another room empty handed if I can help it. Fair enough. You, uh, are looking around the main chamber and, you know, like I said, it is like a, like what looks like just the hallway to get to the other rooms, but you do find a loose pipe that is just, uh, on the ground, clearly meant to go somewhere else, like in use, use maybe in like another room Hell to yeah. like help with like connecting something, or whatever. But for now, it's just useful for your purposes. Yeah, if work. it work, if it works in Clue, then it'll work here. All right, <laughs> there you go. Loose pipe. <laughs> <laughs> so you have now a metal pipe as a weapon. Jonathan, where do you go? I feel like that top room is calling my name above where it says main chamber. Okay. You oh, go into the top room and you find yourself oh, never in mind. The, no, it's not that big. what is called the <laughs> inner chamber. The inner chamber looks like basically like a, a uh, stopgap between uh, another room that is above it. And uh it's mostly just like kind of looks like it has like a like a few windows so you can see outside you can see that you're clearly like in space you are in the stars right now but you are also you yeah you also have like uh just like mechanics and wires and uh, tons of machines whirring and stuff like that but all of them seem to be headed towards the direction of the room that is just above 
the inner chamber as well. And there also seems to be like uh, the doors here seem a little more heavy duty than the doors in the room you were in prior. You know, where those just look like doors for just coming in and out. This looks more like like lockdown scenario type doors. Like it's a, like something really serious is supposed to go on in here. I'll search for a tool because I want to be like equipped with something. Fair enough. Because it seems like I'm going to be here. You search in the room, and as you're searching, you you see that this room is actually very sterile. There's uh, not a lot of things that are loose for you to pull off, and there's and if you even if you did, you wouldn't quite know what it is you're looking at or how to use it. So unfortunately, there's no tools for you to use in this room. Lame. I like that I got a big button. That feels like me. <laughs> And it is now the monster's turn. It's going to be me. <laughs> I can feel it. Okay. So, uh, Alex, where do you go? Don't like that we got nothing of that. Um... <laughs> Ominous. I'm not going to give you hints at what's going on, all right? That's the horror. <laughs> Let's go to the room uh, in between me and Jonathan, the ember, inner chamber and the engine room. This room? Yeah. So you go into the main chamber and you try to get into this room. As you do, the first thing you see upon arriving at the doorway is that it doesn't open. The other doors, they just psh, immediately open as soon as you walk up towards them. This one, however, does not. In fact... It has a small, like, pad next to it that has a red glow to it that you try to interact with. And as you do, nothing. No door doesn't open. Door doesn't, like, even budge in the, in the slightest. And so you presume that you need something before you can get into this room. Okay. Can't really look for... I guess, so I'm stuck in the main chamber. So you're stuck in Can the main I chamber. Can I assess for danger? Yes. You uh, just realize that the biggest main danger of anything else in this room is, is the pro Because <laughs> <laughs> she has the pipe. Kaylee's running around with a pipe. I feel like I should and be a little bit And apparently we are all on drugs. So... <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you are in the you you find like the biggest danger is the pro patch that you know you notice that it's not exactly covered by anything. So if one was to do so, and you actually do see the controls for the pro patch as well nearby to its location, you know this big center. And so hypothetically, if one was so inclined, they could open that thing. And uh, while Jonathan knows for sure you're in space, you can only assume and. If that were to open, it would be pretty much lights out for anyone and everyone inside the main chamber, unless it's being used for the sa express purposes of sending you down safely using, like, you know, the regular uh, beamed up type thing. So that's, like, the most immediate danger of anything else. Kaylee, your turn. Uh, let's try the room between the engine room and the containment chamber. Also, okay. I'll be right back really quick because I forgot I didn't feed my cat. I need to go do that <laughs> real quick. Be right back. Go for it. Right. <laughs> Kaylee, you find the examination room. Oh, God. <laughs> you go inside <laughs> and <laughs> as you go inside of the examination room, you find that this is like, that's the nice way of putting it or the best way you can surmise it. But what's happening in this room is this is where the dissections happen. This is where like you find the remains of what is left of Alexa Pascala as all of her organs and insides have been sprawled out over the table, almost as if her two parts of her body have been turned into like, uh, like what, what it looks like when you squeeze a ravioli that you've cut in half and all the meat uh. comes up skin like that uh it's, it's just like 
all on the table and like just a mix of her organs and bones and things like that (laughs) and uh hanging above in the examination room is also like like you know or uh hanging on the walls rather is just like what looks like saws knives drills things mind you the alien is bigger than you so a lot of these tools you wouldn't be able to handle with your hand but like or at least most of them anyway at least a lot of the more advanced stuff like the saws and like the automatic saws and things but you could recognize that this is definitely where this like the, the surgeries happen as far as this alien examining human beings and speaking of which some of the other patrons that you saw as well are also in this room also dissected and uh like you know made into basically science experiments well all right then <laughs> love it uh yeah can i look for danger here i think i found it <laughs> yes uh major danger the sharp tools that are hanging above because while there are tools hanging on the floor like or sorry the uh, floor the walls there's also a bunch of sharp tools hanging oh. above you as well like from the from the ceiling mostly around the examination table but hypothetically if one were inclined they could uh if those tools were to fall on top of you or someone were to grab them from up top and throw them onto you wouldn't be good for your health so good to know very Hmm. immediate danger there jonathan where do you go uh do you feel like joining me in the examination room (laughs) i'm good (laughs) <laughs> I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go to the room next to the containment chamber, the other room. This room? On your way there, as you're oh, going no. to the inner chamber, like leaving the inner chamber, okay. you see <laughs> the alien walk in t- walking into the inner chamber as you're leaving. And this will be your first gamble roll trying to like or you know like where you get to either fight or run. I would assume you're probably planning on running because you don't have a weapon to use. Mm -hmm. So So what do I do? High or low? Tell me like if you think the number's gonna be Uh, high or the number's gonna be low. High, we're going high. All right. Okay, so you see this creature standing before you towering over you and you immediately hightail it out of there as you're trying to leave the alien reaches out (laughs) and wraps his tendrils around your neck and he is just like like just choking you out (laughs) he's trying his best to like what did i tell you guys you're getting going after the like jerome you should know better than go up the black man first (laughs) lame the dice the chance has happened (laughs) Live, living up to the title, huh? <laughs> That's right. And you're just like, you're like lucky for you. You're like, his tendrils are large enough that you get a chance to like throw your teeth in there and you bite one of his tendrils and you lose one health point, but you do get away, luckily. And uh, you have now a like, like uh, mark around your neck from being choked by the alien. And uh, you make it to the compactor room. Oh. The compactor room, as soon as you walk in, you see that it is where all of the junk goes. All the stuff that gets caught in the pro patch. It's almost like it kind of just gets funneled into this room. Because you see the remnants of the museum, all the brick, stone other things, other old paintings, you know, the glassware, silverware, all that stuff. And this is where it all just gets compacted down and crushed and taken somewhere else, if not just dumped into space, or the case may be. And you see that it is, uh, as you walk into the room, there's like a bit of a drop off into the compactor. I'm... Well, I feel like you set me up to look for an opportunity, but I'm going to look for a tool. Okay. Because I'm still toolless. 
in the compactor room, you see that there is plenty of, like I said, plenty of junk and stuff around. But not just junk from your most recent abduction, but also from former abductions earlier. And amongst some of the junk, you find a rusty screwdriver that still looks pretty intact and pretty good enough to possibly be used as a weapon. I mean, I'll take it. Give them tetanus. No pi- <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> it's, it's no pipe, but I'll, I'll take some. The All rust right. causes extra damage, right? <laughs> <laughs> Call me Tommy Pickles. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Don't keep it where he kept it, though. Right. Right. Monsters on the move. Especially after getting bitten. Granted, though, mind you, that bite did not make him lose a health point. It was just a minor inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, he, uh, so we now are in round three. Alex, where are you going? I'm going to go back to the engine room. Okay. What are you doing in the engine room? Uh, this time I'm going to look for a weapon or item. You look in the engine room and uh, while you still don't really know what you're looking at as far as like the uh, in, like the stuff that is you know, working in here, the gears and all those things, what you do find is a uh, something that looks resemblant of a wrench. And while you don't know if it is actually a wrench... It's the closest thing you think you'll get to actually knowing what any of this stuff is. And so you take it, and now you have essentially an alien wrench as your weapon of choice uh, going forward. Just call me Scotty. (laughs) (laughs) Kaylee, where are you headed? I love that we have, like, all the tools in the toolbox. Like, we, like, all Bob the Builder up in here. (laughs) Uh, I would very much like to leave the examination room <laughs> and, uh, I think, uh, you know, what? I think I'm also going to go to the engine room. Okay. What do you look for in the engine room? Uh, I would like to assess the danger. So Let's in the security I- room, much like. Or sorry, secure engine room. Much like uh, Alex found a, that pad that had like what looked like possibly an emergency shutdown type situation. You also see that next to that pad is also what looks like it could uh, lead to possibly a lockdown of some kind. Now you don't know what that means per se, but whatever it means, it can't be good because the symbols don't look very nice. They look very aggressive and very mean. So, you can just surmise that it possibly is a security lockdown type situation. Good to know. What color is the button? This one is more like less a button and more just like a big, kind of like that keypad that you saw for the the other room that you couldn't get into. And in this case, this one is just like a big red, just like like what looks like a pad or something with a symbol on it that looks kind of mean. (laughs) Jonathan, where do you go? Well, if everyone else is in the engine room, I'm going (laughs) to, there's safety in numbers, so I'm going to follow them. And that alien better not cross paths with me on the way there. (laughs) Don't worry, we'll sacrifice Kaylee if needed. Or he's gonna be screwed. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you go to the engine room. What do you do? Let's look for an opportunity this time. So, unfortunately. Uh, Alex has already found the one opportunity that is in this room because uh, it's being alien technology. There's very little that you know or understand about what's going on in this room outside of these buttons that even then you're kind of making guesses at what they do. 
And so unfortunately there's just no opportunities in this room further that haven't already been found. You Tragic. just have to go to the engine room first, Alex. I told you, call me Scotty. I know who I am. <laughs> if I'm very Star Trekky, I would definitely end up there. Now, is, that the, is that the case for most? Like, if 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 are there multiple opportunities slash tools in different rooms? Who's to say? Only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, shucks. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Aliens moved. <clears throat> Next. Alex, where you go? Trying to figure out where the alien would... I guess... Head to that room that's hasn't been discovered yet okay you find yourself in the processing plant Ooh. which again processing plant is the nice way of putting it but what you find <laughs> in this room is that there's a series of vats and tubes of what look like <clears throat> acidic uh vials about human sized and to see this in action you find the Salvadors in one of them, oh. banging on the inside of the glass. Oh. Say, get me out of here! But before you can react or do anything, you see that the whole shit, like the tube that he's in, floods with this fluid of some kind. And slowly, what parts of his body don't begin to melt and fall off of him, much like meat falling off bone, starts to mutate and transform and change into what looks like some of the creatures that you saw inside of Alexa's uh paintings and so he like becomes my own like painting no no, no. like some paintings uh, in general or just all of them yes like oh, some okay. like the one you saw some of the other ones like it's like in actually if you look in all like as you look in all the other bats around you okay excuse me you see that there are like different people that look like different things from different paintings that you saw throughout the art art show and so he is like melt, like melting and trans, uh, and transforming into a mutated creature, like humanoid s creature with different uh, body parts and uh, you know other things growing off of him. Other parts of him becoming something else, like his arm becoming a tail or something like that. Like it's very grotesque and gross. As Salvador just gets like essentially uh, transformed. Also, here is just like uh, out of the people who, uh, like, you know, the ones that have been transformed are in the vats. Looking over, you see what looks like people, but they've all been either like knocked out or something. And as you try to wake them, you see that there's just no helping them, even though they do have very weak heartbeats. They're all just kind of just laying there lifeless. Okay. Horrifying. Okay. Um, I guess I look for an opportunity. Okay. Let's see here. Processing plant. You find in the processing plant uh, that there are also what you can uh, surmise are like desks, you know, alien desks, but desks nonetheless. And there's drawers filled with things. As you pull one of the drawers, you find what looks like Similar to the tablet you found on that door you couldn't get into. Looks like a smaller version of that. But this one, unlike the one on the door you're looking at that was red, this one's green. Oh. And so it's an opportunity that led to a tool. So now you have the green key card. Hey. Hey. Kaylee, where do you go? Uh... I'm going to go to the inner chamber. Okay. You go to the inner chamber and much like what Jonathan found is the same. A lot of the uh, wires and you know you find, you get a confirmation that you are indeed yes in space and all the same same stuff. I'm still uh, the only one that doesn't know we're in space, right? 
I mean, I you don't know for sure, but you can pretty much surmise at this point. Going on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, can I look for an opportunity? Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> in the inner chamber, you find that there is next to, there's another door, of course, leading to the room that is above the inner chamber. And next to that door is what looks like a tablet type thing. And the color of it is green. And so you don't know what exactly that means, but there's a green tablet next to this door. But the door refuses to open. Mm. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, where do you go? I'm going to the examination room. <laughs> Good luck, right. buddy. <laughs> you go into the examination room and you see the horrors that have uh, befell uh Alexa Pascala, as she once again looks like a uh, squished ravioli with her organs as the meat. Uh, and uh, you uh, see the, the remains of other human beings and things that have come through. Yada, yada, yada. Sharp tools, dangers, alien stuff. <laughs> this time I'm looking for a tool because, yeah, I feel like there's some okay. tools in here. So you look through uh, the examination room, and while like a lot of the tools are either too big for your hands to hold, or they're just Dang really course. unwieldy. Th let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like that Kia piece sketch. All right, there's a build, and then there's a, <laughs> and then there's a follow through. Okay, you gotta. The, the story only works if I get to the build, and then I give you the payoff. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it made you break character. <laughs> <laughs> He's upset you're still doubting him. Watch, there is no tool. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> it's a green glowy card. <laughs> you're examining uh, like all the uh, tools that you see. And then while some of them you can't hold with your bare hands because they're either too big or too unwieldy or they're just too weird because you know it's alien tools. You don't know what you're looking at. There's some that look a little more rudimentary. And one in particular looks like it's an, a scalpel. It's not quite as average as a normal scalpel would, and it's not as small. In fact, this is more like the size of what would be more like a kitchen knife or something, and a lot longer. But for your purposes, as being a human being, you can't hold it, so you use it. And so now you've found the alien scalpel to use as a weapon as well. So now you have two tools, a screwdriver and an alien scalpel. Cool. And now the alien will take his time to move. I'll BRB. I can still hear. I'm just getting water. All right. Alex, your turn. Where do you go? Now, mind you, you know where that key, you now have the key card, but you don't actually know where it goes to. Unless you run into Kate. Thing. We got everything we needed out of the engine room. Sounds like we got everything we needed out of the examination room. I guess. And I think you guys took the. Yeah, I guess go to the inner chamber. Okay. You head to the inner chamber. And uh, mind you, this will count as your move action, even if you do use that key card, by the way. But okay. you go to the inner chamber, and you find Kaylee there. Hey, and hey. Also you find you find all of the things I've described earlier. You know, the room, like the room's covered in wires and, and uh, mechanics and things like that that you don't quite understand. We're and in space. you see that you're in space. <laughs> oh my God! Is that what's been going on? Well, that explains all the people in tubes. <laughs> oh, people by the way, I tubes? found people in tubes. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a whole thing, man. Wow. We're, our host is dead, by the way. Like, he said run, but he got captured just immediately. R.I.P. So. Salvador should have should have hung back. The royal we was not helping him there. No He's like, we got to get out of here. And boy, he sure did. 
<laughs> also, have you seen Jonathan? Because, like, I don't know where he went after the engine room. Nope. Haven't okay. seen Jonathan. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we'll cross paths with him. <laughs> I know I found this door. And this door has a green glowy thing. I don't know if you know anything about green glowy things. I do, but I think I have to... I'm going to assess the danger first around the room. Fair. Okay. You look for a danger in the inner chamber, and you find that uh, this being the inner chamber... uh, uh, Excuse me. Much like I told Jonathan how the inner chamber has some heavy-duty doors, one of those heavy-duty doors is on the opposite side of the room on the corner kind of around uh, this area here. And uh, that door is clearly an airlock hatch. It looks like it heads directly out into space. And so if one were to inclined, like were inclined, they could uh, press it and open it and launch. And then uh, the two doors here and here would definitely lock down and launch whoever's in the inner chamber into space immediately. So something to be on the lookout for. And that's uh, that's that. Kaylee, what do you do? Well, all right then. <laughs> Pull the door. Uh... And mind you, I like I like uh, I always leave this to you guys' expression, like you know how expressive you want to be as far as using tools and stuff. But you you don't have to keep tools to yourself. You can give them to other people to use. I to was use just about to ask that. Uh, can I take? Or borrow the green key card to swipe open the door from Alex? Or uh, attempt to ask, open the door? Ask Alex. Alex, can I do that? Does that count as an action or no? I wasn't sure. I'll say, in the, in the, uh, for the sake of being nice, no. That's okay. just something you can do. I'll, or I'll consider it your move action, as in you have to move into that room then if you open it. Okay. Uh, hey, Alex, can I borrow this key card that I heard you, you have? What's in my pockets? Because <laughs> you were just talking about. You did just say you found a green key did card. Did I? <laughs> I thought yeah. I was talking I think... about the people in the tubes. I was still shaking up about that. Uh, but sure, okay. I'll lend it to you. <laughs> I think you did say you found a green key card. I asked if I... you had it. I was like, hey, did you check out this? green glowy door look i saw a what? bunch of people yeah. in tubes and it's freaked me out i'm a little unsteady Bro, don't, up, even, up, don't even don't even go in that operating room all right don't go there there's don't an operating there. room <laughs> kaylee opens yes. up the door she runs out of it and then leaves us both stranded <laughs> <laughs> the door behind her. kaylee <laughs> All right, I'm going to open the door. Let's open the next door. Okay. You open the door, and you find that you are at the bridge. Inside the bridge is base. Ah, no. The bridge. I said the bridge. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) You are inside of what looks like the, like, control center of where you can, like, uh, fly the ship, possibly. And while you don't quite understand like how the mechanics work and things like that, you feel like if you could get a basic grasp enough to be able to possibly fly yourselves out of there. Or, well, fly anywhere, really. Because, I mean, it is just the bridge of the spaceship. Okay. So do I take a second action, or is that just the whole turn? Well, that was your move. Yeah, you can look for a tool, opportunities, or dangers in here. Uh... I would like to look for danger. <laughs> I feel so very uh, much ominous. Yeah, what is about... alien at? Yeah, where, where the fuck is alien, alien at? Did. Or no, I got attacked and then the alien did. <laughs> you did get attacked once, yes. Uh, so the security, like you uh, look around on the bridge and amongst the many buttons that you don't understand and the few that you seem like you do, you do see a similar button to you, and it's another one of those security lockdown buttons, just like the ones that was in the engine room. And so presumably, you now understand that there's two places that a security lockdown can be activated. 
that could trap you or your friends from being able to escape or at the very least in a room with like in danger with an alien so something to be on the lookout for and think about oh or maybe the alien can't get in if we press the button i mean it's his ship so he probably knows how to turn off the security lockdown if you tried to trap him within his own security lockdown <laughs> I'm I'm trying to think outside the box, all right? <laughs> Let me have this. <laughs> I'm trying. I just don't want you to waste turns and then you're just like, why didn't that work? <laughs> Fair enough. You only have so many times. <laughs> to, 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 to We're running out of time and we don't even realize it. <laughs> Keep hitting the button like five nights of fretting. Uh, Jonathan, your turn. What do you do? I am going to go. Can I stay in a room? Yeah, You're staying in the don't have horror to leave. room. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like if I go anywhere else, I'm gonna get found by the aliens. <laughs> I'm waiting for y'all to... But you want to hide in the room with all the murder tools that are so big that you can't even pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> Can that's, I go to the that's, container? That's the room you want to hide in? Just to be clear. <laughs> just to double check. That's the room. <laughs> Can, I, Can I go to the containment chamber? Okay, so hold on. Are you like you? Don't, so you're not staying in the examination room. You're going to the containment chamber. Correct. Okay. You are headed to the containment chamber. On your way out the door. Oh, I knew it. See, I you. Now, okay. I should have so stayed in the room. I, we all knew I, exactly. Actually, he was knew in the room with all the murder weapons. Yeah, he was going to come in the room anyway. All right. <laughs> like so that that didn't matter. Whether you so it's in your favor because now he has less murder weapons with him. She's like so <laughs> like meta gaming a little bit. Kaylee did actually just save you because if you had stayed in that room and you mess up this gamble roll, those sharp weapons would have came down and you would have lost two health points, which is all you have left instead of one. <laughs> which is what you'll lose right now, possibly if you fail this gamble roll. But lucky for you, you also have a tool, got a so you can fight back as well on your way out. Um, there you go, but high or low? What are your what are your, uh, what are your guesses? We're still going high. We're riding high. All right. Okay. So you are, uh, and also, which tool do you want to use? Let's Not use that they have scar. multiple uses. Just I just want to I want to uh, describe what how cool it's going to look. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the alien comes in, and upon seeing you, remembering. The, pay, the annoyance that you were in biting one of his tendrils. He rushes in, grabs one of the saws off the wall, and tries to lunge at you. But luckily, you're pretty fast, and now you've learned your lesson after getting attacked once. So you duck down underneath the saw, and much like almost like a Matrix-esque move, you jab the scalpel right in the side of the alien. He, scre he screams out, <laughs> and just like is in serious pain. Loses a hit point as well as you, like, uh, book it. Unfortunately, his skin is pretty tough and pretty hard. And so while stabbing him with the scalpel did some damage, unfortunately, you weren't able to, in your, in your ability to try and run past him, jab it back out. So it's just stuck in him and you had to leave it behind. But you do escape unscathed and make it into the containment chamber. All right. That's all right. I got the screwdriver and I still got... Two lives left. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Inside of the containment chamber, what do you do? I mean, you would, I would describe it, but you know what it looks like already. <laughs> it's just a, a darkish room, very dimly lit with uh, what's left of just like trash and other like old clothes and stuff from presumably people who have also been taken over the years uh, before you guys and uh, stuff like that. I'm going to look, since I don't think there are much opportunities, uh, and I've already uh, fought danger, I am going to look for another tool. 
I'm going to say, like, as you're looking through, like I said, it's a containment chamber, so they try their best not to have anything in here that's too useful. But, of course, they've left clothing and things left over from humans that have been here before. And so what you find are rags of clothes that you can use for various things and possibly also to help you dig through things that might be dangerous. What that'll be, we don't know yet. But you've found rags that you can use to protect your hands uh, from dangerous items. Wrap one of those around your neck. Right. For next time. <laughs> <laughs> the alien's on the move. Nope. Also, nope. God dang it, he's bouncing out of the, out of the box. Just threw it. Okay, there we go. All good. So now, we are in round five, I think. Yes, round mm -hmm. five. We're halfway through, guys. You got five more rounds to get the hell out of here. Luckily, you have found the bridge, so you at least know you can ste possibly steer yourself back to safety. But unfortunately, the alien's still around. So, you know, who knows what will happen. Here we go. Alex, what do you do? I'm going to go to the bridge and look for a tool. Okay. You go up to the bridge. You find Kaylee there. Hey! <laughs> thanks for letting me in! <laughs> you also find that the bridge is, of course, you know, filled with tons of buttons and stuff, controls and things to fly the spaceship. Um, and you also find that there is what looks like a small area filled with uh, alien tools and things uh, that probably the alien just keeps on his person for possibly expiration and things like that, including, like, possibly uh like a, a, a helmet used for like going down to planets that maybe don't have an atmosphere that is conducive to what he can breathe in but uh you also find a sword that is like you know relatively human sized a little big little cumbersome but for the most part you can pick it up and so you do and so now you have an alien sword Kaylee look i have a sword Duh. <laughs> that's way cooler than this lead pipe I'm a little <laughs> jealous I was gonna whip out my machete but I put it somewhere else for once <laughs> Kaylee your turn where do you go uh, I would like to stay here and look for an opportunity so in the opportunities column we have a couple things. Oh, what you find is that you find that there is, uh, of course, on the like you know the initial like dashboard where a lot of the buttons and steering and all that thing and all that stuff is. There's a screen that looks like it has a diorama of what looks like it could be Earth, and you presume correctly that this must be the navigation system. And while you don't know entirely how to work it, you do feel, like surmise that maybe if you like mess around with the buttons and mess around a little bit, you can maybe figure out how to get yourself back home and navigate yourself back to Earth. Well, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be the navigator? Jonathan. Hey, you're watching it happen. We're in the same room. So I have a sword now. I'm not watching anything. <laughs> like I don't I don't care about this map. I'm busy with my sword. Alex is in the background just ha ha. I'm gonna slice <laughs> it like this. Ha. I'm like that. Ha. <laughs> just running around with a sword. I would. <laughs> I would. Jonathan, where do you go? Uh I'm gonna go can I go to the the bridge as well? I don't I think I know it exists yet, but I'm gonna say for the sake of gameplay, yes, you can just head straight. Even though you haven't like been there, like you go in that area and you just see the door open. So you just you just go wander. We just okay. didn't close the door behind us. Right. You just see it <laughs> wide open. <laughs> you go to the bridge, Jonathan, and you find Alex and Kaylee there. Hey. I got a sword. Stay you with that. That's fair. Check out this monitor with <laughs> Earth on it. I've been through a lot of trauma already today, guys. Wait till I tell you. 
I see you got some rags. <laughs> Bleeding a bit. What's going on? Yo. Fight for my yo, life. You okay, buddy? <laughs> I need a drink. Anybody? <laughs> you want more of that wine? I don't know if I want more. It's a little. <laughs> <laughs> I need some. They might think this would be more fun. <laughs> I don't care if it causes me to trip out. I like. I, I just need something. It's like when you drink whiskey for the pain. Just you gotta do it. Take the edge yeah. off. <laughs> uh, so you're in the bridge, and you see all of the buttons and steering and everything like that, and all that good stuff. What do you do? Okay, I'm gonna look. I feel like I've been looking for tools too much, so let me look for an opportunity as well. I feel like there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff in the bridge. Don't tell me the opportunity was already taken. <laughs> Well, you look for opportunities, and while Kaylee found the ability to possibly navigate you guys back to Earth, you find that the steering column of the ship, it, it's a mix of things, because it doesn't look like you know, a regular steering column that's or a steering wheel or nothing like that, but it does look similar enough that you that you can pretty much put together the uh, a way to turn the ship one way or the other, go left, go right, all those things. And so, hypothetically, if you could... Get, like you know if anyone could get you back to earth you imagine it could probably be yourself like now that you've kind of examined it a little bit more and figured out uh how to possibly turn this ship around okay cool now the aliens turn round six here we go alex what do you do? Um, let me go back to the processing plant and see if there's anything more in that desk. Okay. So I you guess... go back to the processing plant. What are you looking for? Uh, I guess a tool. So you go to the processing plant, and unfortunately, there is nothing on the ground that you can find that's useful for you in the regards to being used as a weapon or even as something that you could use to maybe like like pry doors open or something like that. And so really, it's just a lot of horrors, knocked out people soon to be turned into horrors, and <laughs> the that one open drawer that you already examined earlier. Okay. Kaylee. Where do you go? Uh, I'm going to ask Jonathan before I leave. Hey, Jonathan, you, you see this planet Earth thing? Do you want to, one of us, Poke, should drive us home? <laughs> How you feel about that? <laughs> You want one of us, maybe? I don't know. Just and I, I so <laughs> I wait. So I have... I feel confused, and I'm in another room. <laughs> so okay. So here's how this can work, Kaylee. Since Kaylee found the navigation system, Kaylee, you can navigate. Oh, I can. And okay, Jonathan, I wasn't sure because of the weird. Since... No, no, no. You can navigate. Jonathan, since you found the steering, you can steer. If oh, you were to reverse, okay. like if you were to reverse roles, it would take you a second. So in, in other words, take you a turn to learn each other's roles real quick again. But as is now, since Jonathan's the one who found the steering and took the time to examine it, he can steer. Since you're the one who found the navigation and took the time to examine it, you can navigate. And we're in the same room, right? So we're I can be like, room. hey, I can do this. You can do that. Okay, let's let's do it. Yeah. Teamwork. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Alex left, so I guess if she tries to come back in, she might get blasted into space. <laughs> I'm trying to find things for us to help us move forward, but okay. Okay. Fine. I'm just saying, you no left the room and like you. I know, you right after the... I came in it too. <laughs> yeah, what's that about? <laughs> I figured you two would be safe together, and I could just go look for stuff. 
<laughs> Alex is just like, this is fine. Or the alien keeps attacking John. Jonathan looks really away from him. Jonathan looks really bad. <laughs> like, like, Jonathan's bad luck. You've been attacked twice, man. Like, with no respect, <laughs> I might be safer with the horrors in that yeah. room. <laughs> You're right. Maybe I'm jinxing it. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. So, Kaylee, <laughs> since it's your turn, I will say sure. this is a gamble roll because, again, you know how to do it, but you don't you don't know exactly how to do it. Well, that's fair. So that's this fair. is a gamble. So on a successful gamble roll, you'll like navigate to Earth. On a failed okay. one, it doesn't mean you can't do it again. It just means that you'll have to wait till your next turn to try and like do the navigation again. Well, that's comforting, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. So you won't lose your opportunity to do it. It's just it'll uh, take you like um, you'll just have to do it I'm again on the next the gamble. Go. I'm gonna do it. Oh no, it's a mandatory. You have to do the gamble. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm letting you know that this is what I'm doing. We're gambling. <laughs> so, uh, high or low? Uh, I'm i uh, I'm gonna hit him low. All right. We'll do the opposite of Jonathan. We'll see what fuck around and find out. <laughs> there we go. So you uh, examine the pla the the um, screen. You're pressing buttons. You're trying to figure some stuff out. You're playing around, and while on one like you you don't know quite what you're doing, but you know you're you're seeing symbols that look somewhat similar, and so you're just like, no, that's Mars. That might be Saturn. Maybe I don't know. And you're just like like swiping, and eventually you do find something that looks resemblant of Earth. And you click on that, and the whole console kind of lights up, almost like it's saying, navigation locked in. It's going towards Earth. You're headed back in the right direction. Oh. Hey. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jonathan, your turn. Do you immediately start okay, well, steering, or did you want to do something else first? You don't have to immediately start if you don't want to. I'll immediately start steering. All right. This is also <laughs> a gamble like, role because, again, I'm, I'm going to head out. <laughs> you've, you've surmised how to, how to steer this ship, but you don't, you don't quite have it down yet, you know, because it's alien to you. So this is also a gamble, so higher. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, so higher uh, low. Which one? Oh, uh, just keep going with high. Boom. All right. Okay. So you immediately grab onto the various steering mechanisms, and this ship is sluggish. It is hard to turn and slow around. Like even though there's you're flowing through space, it seems like it should be easier. There's just a lot of mechanics that you don't quite understand, and so the ship is rumbling and rotating as you're trying to like get a hold of it. But despite the the hardships of trying to get the ship to move and and operate you do feel it turn itself around and get back on track and as you're trying to steer you see on the visor that what would be the window is like a like set path <clears throat> you can see that is leading you to your destination and so you're on your way to earth now mind you you're not quite there yet. The ship is kind of guiding itself, but you have just pointed it in the right direction. So you still have a few more rounds before you get there. But you've like uh, sped up your process to get there and delayed like the inevitability of you getting lost in space. And so you've done All like right. you've set you've, you've uh, set yourself on on the course to get back home, but you're still not out of the woods just yet. Okay, cool. Monster's turn. Yeah. Okay. So, Alex, your turn. What do you do? Mm, let's go to the compactor room where I keep looking around. All right. You go to the compactor room and you see that it is filled with just junk and stuff from uh, previous abductees who have uh, left behind, like, gear, clothing, other things, tools, all types of other stuff that, like, the alien had no use for and is just compacting into trash or into waste that can be used for, I guess, other purposes. You don't quite know what, but whatever it is, it's probably just, like, recycling into something else. 
Okay, I do an opportunity. Okay. As you go into the compactor room, you see you actually dive into the compactor because you see something that piques your interest. And it's a pile of junk that just looks like it's a little too neatly put together. It is kind of in the center of the room. As you get in, you investigate it. And as you do, you find something sticking out the rubble that looks a little worn and old. As you pull it out, you find that it's another one of those smaller tablet things, but this one is red. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Hmm? Found it. Just had to run through garbage. (laughs) (laughs) So now you have the red key card. Kaylee, what do you do now that you've set the ship in the right direction? Mm -hmm. So... We just know we're going in the right direction, right? Yes. There's no way to make this, like, say, go faster (laughs) in the right direction. (laughs) Just. Go faster. All right. (laughs) Just just checking. (laughs) 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 You know. Um. I'm going to go <laughs> to the processing plant. Okay. You get into the processing plant and you see the horrors that Alex has witnessed <laughs> now twice. Uh, uh, mutated creatures in tubes filled with like what looks like this weird fluid. Question, and you can come back to it. I specifically would like to know what the fuck Salvador looks like now. <laughs> Like, what are we talking? Like, well, as far as you know, you don't even know that that is Salvador. <laughs> I, I know, but, but well, I mean, Alex told me he died in a tube, so I, did. I could maybe I assume. The secret. Yeah, I could just assume. I probably Salvador, wouldn't know for sure. He looks like a like humanoid being with like two legs that have like turned to nubs now because the bottom part's been melted off with the meat still hanging almost like loose fabric uh, from the nubs and on the body has like various eyeballs like of different animals growing and blinking at you from different uh, parts Mm. of his of his body his head has kind of split open and coming out of it it looks like more infinite split heads and so it just looks like this lapped this lapses of heads that are just kind of opening and at the top is the one that is just a mouth with like claws that's just opening and closing as it's trying to breathe basically in the fluid and his arms have become kind of like like tentacles basically and so he's just this like multi-eyed tentacled creature swimming around in the fluid with like nubby legs yeah all right (laughs) (laughs) good good assessment (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, good to see he's doing well. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look for a weapon because I do have this lead pipe, but I feel like it uh, might might not be up to the caliber I need. So for the sake of you not wasting a turn, uh, Alex already looked for tools. There's no more tools in here. So oh, my God. Here. Alex uh, has all do. the tools. <laughs> I love. Hey, how come you didn't give me that heads up when I was in the engine room? I didn't give you any heads because I hadn't. No, seen I, you. no, he's talking to me. <laughs> oh, no, I saw you. I was like, I because we're there. getting closer to the end of the game. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, let's see. I forget if did we assess for danger in there too. No, I feel like no. Alex did everything in there. Uh, I'll assess for danger. I'm here. We'll find. We'll check it out. So the danger you find in here is that while Salvador was in a tube and other people are in tubes, there are still a few that are open. Three, to be exact. Because there was like almost like the intention was to put you and your friends in them to see what would happen. And so there are three open tanks. So, so the silver lining is we weren't going to go to the examination room. Cool. <laughs> is it though? 
Well, not yet. One you'd be yeah. dead. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying to find a sunny side here. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, your turn. You've gotten the ship on track. You're headed home. And while it might take a minute to get there, you're you're on the way, on your way. Um, my dog Frank. I mean Gibson is watching. Uh, American Ninja Warrior right now. Um, <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Really quick, I was watching Reba and Christian's dogs, Winnie, sat right in front of me watching a whole two episodes. I was like, this boy is like Reba. Okay. He's still... Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. But he's literally standing at the TV. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> love it. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> it's his favorite. Um, right. <laughs> I think I get pretty amazed too. Right. <laughs> um, I should probably keep steering, right? No, you don't have to. The ship's on auto; like it's it's going in the right it's direction. All you did was point it in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, let me go. And mind you, by the way, the inner chamber is still a room, guys. Like, it's not just the room that leads to the bridge. It is also a location. Okay, let me go to the inner chamber. And then... I'm going to search for... an opportunity there. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you already so looked for you, weapons and found nothing last time. Right, right. Yeah. So you go into the inner chamber and you look and you see that there are various things that are useful uh, for what, like, for the alien. And while a lot of them are very weird to you and you're like, I don't even want to touch those, one that in particular actually would be interesting to you is uh, a book that has similar symbols to what you've seen. You've been in the engine room, right? Yeah. Yes. Things that look like they're similar to the engine room. And while you don't know what all these symbols mean, you do recognize stuff like what looks like uh, the sequence to possibly the emergency shutdown. And also what looks like similar stuff to other things in the engineering. And you uh, put together, this is a book kind of giving you the rundown, the engineering stuff, including also maybe some like uh, symbols that are similar to what was in the navigation system. Then symbols similar to the steering as well. And so this was another way for you to access that opportunity as well. But you guys already did it anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> but <laughs> this, book has, like, this book has a lot of uh, information that's uh, helpful to you in regards to like engineering stuff. And so it'd be helpful for the engineering room. Okay, perfect, perfect. And also instructions on the pro patch as well. Oh, all right. Alien move. Okay. Round eight. We're almost there. Alex, what do you do? I guess I go use that key card on that room I was trying to get into earlier. Okay, you go through the main chamber and you go to the mysterious room that you tried to access earlier and could not. And you find that you are inside of the armory. Or what yes. you can put together Damn. is an armory. He gets all the cool weapons. I just like that I keep <laughs> finding weapons. I appreciate that. And it's very true to who I am. It's That is true. It's very accurate. <laughs> this spaceship kind of looks like um, the artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Surprise! The wrong. alien's actually Prince. He's in a costume. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a conspiracy? He was actually purple an alien brain, all along. Purple brain. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> That's the wine that you drank. <laughs> <laughs> the, why do you think she was so inspired? <laughs> <laughs> who isn't <it>, right <laughs> um the armory is 
uh, you surmise it mainly, mainly because there's stuff in there that's just like looks more like weaponry. A lot of it is stuff that you can't really hold. Uh, but it's uh, uh, there's a few things in there that you look like you probably could get some use out of for sure. And there's also definitely like things that could be that could prove useful in trying to just kill the alien because it just looks super dangerous like stuff that has electricity frying off of it stuff that has really sharp edges and looks like it's meant for war has a little bit of blood on it and stuff like that okay um i guess look for let me look for an opportunity first okay so you, uh, the opportunity you find in this ship is unfortunately useless to you now, but <laughs> <laughs> you find a map of the ship, like a whole breakdown of all the rooms. And so basically, if you had gone to the contractor room first, and then went straight here and found this map, it would have unlocked all the area. I would like all the areas wouldn't have been hidden. Wasn't Kaylee and Jonathan both in the contractor room? No, just Jonathan, but he didn't oh, search oh. for an opportunity. He you should have cool. dug in the trash, man. <laughs> figure things out I sooner. was trying to find something. <laughs> Jonathan I just found... was living through his trauma. <laughs> like I should live through my trauma. I was fine. Found a key and a map, which is pointless now. But go on. <laughs> but yeah, so you find a map of the ship, a whole breakdown of like where everything is and all that stuff. Uh, Kaylee, your turn. What do you look for and where do you go? Uh, I would like to go to the armory and look for a weapon. Okay. That seems you like go... the place for weaponry. <laughs> fair, fair. You, you go to the armory and, of course, it being an alien spaceship. Oh, also, you find Alex there. Yay. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you find uh, a laser gun. That has Ooh. only three Ooh. shots in it. And oh. so it's the only tool that is reusable. Suicide murder. Reusable? Oh, so I can find more lasers? No, just that you can use it for three. You have three uses out of it. Three shots. Yes. It three is shots. Russian roulette of a space laser. <laughs> Love it. Cool. Jonathan. What do you do? I like I keep copying everyone else, but I'm going to go to the armory as well because I'm just sitting here with my screwdriver and my clothes, my dirty clothes. <laughs> you go to the armory and you find Alex and Kaylee there. Hey! hey. Uh, what are you looking for? And then... Um, I feel like the by um, actually weapon, yeah, or a tool. Sorry. You go and you find in there that while Kaylee may have found the laser gun, you find what you can only surmise is possibly some grenades, <laughs> and so Ooh. you find little alien explosives. Now, mind you, though, they're not the size of a regular grenade, so you don't presume that they would do as much damage as a regular grenade would, but rather something a little more personal. So you would need to get a little more up and up close to make it actually stick. But if you were to get up close and put, plant that explosive on a person or an alien per se, it could do some serious damage without doing too much damage to yourself, uh, right. as long as you stick far enough. Because I don't want to. I don't want a grenade that's too explosive. Because I'm on this ship. <laughs> yeah, it's a small exactly. ship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's what you find. Aliens turn. Ooh. Cool. Also, oh, Lord, he coming. While we're, while, we're in round, <laughs> while we're in round nine, good news. You feel the ship rumble and then stop. Because you've made it to Earth. Hey. <laughs> Ooh. Now, however, where are we? Still not out of the woods yet, because you're still on the ship. Now that you like, so now you've made it to Earth, but you need to find a way off of this ship and get the hell out of here, because the alien could still easily find you and take you out anyway. So, new missions, new goals. 
Alex, your turn. What do you do? Well, I guess I move towards the inner chamber because there is that airlock. Mm, That's what I was sorry. thinking. So I go there and okay. I guess assess opportunity. You know, like it's like I I didn't think about that that possibility, but a danger being turned into an opportunity, smart idea. I'll say that's a go. I like like however you have to know how to work it. So Jonathan, do you share your knowledge on how to work the engineering parts and stuff that you've learned through the engineering book? I do not want <gasps> us to stay on this ship. So yes. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, you got me. Turning petty about not being oh, attacked. That's what I I'm so sorry I found my sword. We were <laughs> we were giving them so much crap, you know, about the tentacles and the. I was about to, that was about to become like a Mexican standoff, and Jonathan be like, "I'm not sharing my secrets," and Alex be like, "I will cut you. I will cut you." <laughs> like in this armory. alien tries to come up. We are in the middle of something. Do you mind? <laughs> And then Jonathan's like, you could cut me, but then I'll blow us all up. I'll do it. I'll kill us you all. Know what? Forget about no, sacrificing Kaylee. No, no, no. I'm sacrificing you now, Jonathan. Oh, <laughs> I gotta run you. Oh my god. Kaylee's just like, all right, everyone just calm down. Calm down, let me think. <laughs> Give me I, got, to think. I got three got bullets three and time. there's three of us here. <laughs> <laughs> Kaylee? <laughs> This got real. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jonathan shares his knowledge. You open the airlock. It takes you a minute, but you do you do figure it out, and it opens. And uh, I'm gonna say you y'all can only escape one at a time, but nonetheless, because your your turns are before the aliens, you all get out, and uh, each of at? you only takes one thing of damage uh like, like one hit point worth of damage because the one thing you didn't do was make sure that you were you know on the ground i just said you stopped i didn't say you landed on the ground <laughs> so you jumped you know, from really high up worth it i feel like, <laughs> that's sure, like if, if you saw hey, salvador I, I, you would have jumped too <laughs> all I, right I, I, with the clothes I found in the containment chamber, that that acts like a parachute for me. All right, oh, yeah. Yeah. you didn't have that much to make a parachute. <laughs> what what if he like ties them together like a little prison break? You know, <laughs> I mean, just like to get him down far enough that the fall doesn't hurt. Yeah, you won't right. break How your legs. How far in the air are we? <laughs> You're about like I don't know, like twenty feet up. I mean, I feel like and after they just us. see me go down, they... What's beneath like... you is left of the museum, so just rubble. <laughs> just hard rubble. I feel like after seeing me just drop, I think Jonathan and Kaylee would be smart enough not to just step out. I feel like they could just... <laughs> <laughs> they could just step out, whatever. I mean, okay, well, again, I'll... after you see Salvador... I am like, I, was, woo, I, I am a deep be, sea diver. Become. Like, <laughs> I was there when he became what he became. I I saw the aftermath. Did you see his weird face hole thing with the animal I was, eyes I was there and from the, the beginning to the liquid and right, the acid? Dude, the full transformation. I was there for all. Wow. Of it. I would sacrifice you both in a heartbeat. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll like to be fair. Okay, Alex jumps out and hurts her legs, loses one hit point, but she still got you know two left, so she's alive. She's just really badly hurt in in the leg department. Jonathan, and, like Kaylee, your turn. What do you do? Do you follow in like going yeah. out the airlock, or do you no, find yeah. another way to safely get down? Oh no, I'm definitely going. We're going. <laughs> it's so all I or nothing. Use my clothes as like a. As like a ladder, you know, I can tie them together and then tie them to what though? They have to be tied to something to be tied to the door. The door, the door, and then you climb down. The door like slides in. It's like a, it's like a, 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 a train, like a grocery store like thing door. It doesn't. It's not like a door what? you just open. <laughs> what if he closes the bridge door and like puts it from the bridge door down through the the hatch? Okay, well, that's a good idea. 
Oh! <laughs> Somebody has to carry us to safety, so we need one of us not to be so injured. I don't know. I was life. feeling. I'm the like you and I weren't injured, and I'm just. Yeah. I mean, I walk I'm with a cane in go. real life some days. So. Right. Yeah. Who knows? I've already been through enough today. Who knows if if. The, this fall could I, like yeah be the last i am fall. not waiting for this alien to come around <laughs> so you yeah. uh jonathan so you 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 close the bridge door i'm gonna say alex gives you the key card close the bridge door to lock your little rags it's only enough to like decrease the height from 20 feet to 15 feet so you won't lose That's necessarily so uh, a, a hit point but you it will hurt a little bit just a little but not not enough to like cause major damage i'll take you and you land and you guys survive because the alien mm. didn't know that you uh yeah. escaped <laughs> i mean he, he puts two and two together but you know okay. you get away so and you when also have alien gone. souvenirs that you can yeah. take with you uh i to, got a uh, pipe I'm sure <laughs> I, and the sword. laser gun that you have, but sure. Oh, yeah. the pipe is, <laughs> yeah. With three bullets. <laughs> three lasers. I'm running around with a sword. And let's be honest, that would be something I'd do. Yeah, I'm, I feel like Alex got weapon of choice here, for sure. Yeah. A wrench and a sword? Oh, I'm just running around, but like, look what I got. Oh, yeah, I forgot about your wrench, too. Yeah. And so you guys make it out. You survive. Uh... Where do you, like uh and now we do as all horror movies little recap Alex where do you go uh after after this experience after uh being abducted by aliens seeing the horrors you've seen and uh everything like that I want to a bar I need a drink man that was a lot <laughs> I watched a man turn into an alien I like saw people in tubes I happily did not see the examination room but I dove into <laughs> garbage <laughs> I dove into garbage for all of that. So, like, I'm going to go, like, I'm excited because I'm like, I saw a space and I saw a spaceship. Like, that's my dream. But also that processing plan, I'm just going to go grab a drink. Just chill out there. <laughs> I smell like garbage or clothing of other people. And I'm just like, yeah, just a double of whatever, man. Kaylee, where do you go? Yeah, I feel like I would uh, also go for that drink. I feel like this experience would uh, turn me into a doomsday prepper, without a doubt. Uh, I think I'm gonna like dig myself a little bunker. Uh, I'm gonna like take my both my lead pipe and my my gun with three bullets, and I'm gonna like put them on display. You know, like some people have Funko Pops, and I have like a gun with three bullets. And it's like on my mantle in my doomsday bunker. And it's my doomsday bunker is just full of like, I mean, I don't know if I want to say canned beans because I'm not really big on canned beans, but like, I don't know, Campbell's chicken noodle soup or something. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah like something, something still doomsday preppery, but like a little classier, you know, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, but we definitely live in underground now. That's uh, that, after you after you see both the processing plant and the examination room. That that does some things, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jonathan yeah. didn't even see the processing plant. <laughs> yeah, I love that each of you have I different believe. experiences in regards to like this alien abduction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jonathan, what do you do? Where do you go? Well, first I'm going to a doctor to get this neck checked out. <laughs> uh, oh, I guess my leg is injured. Yeah, that's probably smarter. <laughs> straight to the bar. Alcoholic in me. <laughs> uh, and then after I'm, I'm cleared, I'll, I'll join y'all at the bar. Um, and then maybe we can all have a group therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was pretty traumatic yeah. um and then we're going to the penguin random house offices to get a publishing <laughs> deal where we can all you know co-write a Love book it. together about how um yeah what this experience was like we're gonna get some royalties for sure mm -hmm. oh absolutely yeah 
<laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so, uh, and horror movie fashion, of course, we of course have to have the epilogue. And so, uh, this is what that's what you guys immediately did. A few months passed by, and actually, no, I'm gonna say a year passes by because if we're doing the book publication idea, it's gonna take a minute. So, but a year passes by. Things have pulled over. It's the anniversary of what has been called the mis- the, the disappear like you know the mysterious disappearance of the Salvador Art Gala, of just like you know exactly like sixty four people disappeared from that event that day, uh, outside of three people who were discredited by the investigation board being uh, uh, labeled as possibly you know nuts and wackos talking about aliens and things like that. But it has led to also possibly one of the best uh, fiction book series ever, even though the ri- all three writers claim that it is actually nonfiction and everything <laughs> happened, despite the fact that uh, nobody actually believes them. And... Uh, the family of the a movie of, Michael B. Jordan played me. <laughs> <laughs> the family of Alexa Pascala still sometimes calls to ask what happened. And while uh, I'm, I'm going to leave this up to you guys, do you tell them like what happened for real, or do you just keep it vague and say like she disappeared? I don't know. We saw her art, and that was it. I'm going to keep it vague. Oh, I'd probably hang up. He tried to, <laughs> he tried to fuck me up. <laughs> this whole abduction happened because of her. Oh, my muse. Oh, my muse. Oh, I gave you the... the so, Kaylee's cussing out the family. Yeah, Kaylee's <laughs> cussing out the grieving Run family. Run with the weird mind and hallucinogens. I'm like, no. Like, I would just... They'd be calling, and I'd be like, what do you want? Is it... I'm, is it because of my lawsuit? Like, cause dang, your daughter done no, tried to just, murder. They're just mad all. because we're get. They're just mad because we're getting money. Yeah. Out of I, it. I feel like I would just hang up. I just rich people are like, always greedy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I I ain't going down that road again. I talked to your daughter one time and I got abducted. <laughs> Click. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah and your lives more or less go back to normal in the sense of you know no alien abductions or anything but you know all things considered everything's pretty good uh uh except for one fatal night for each of you and so high or low everybody make it cho- make a choice high or low Jonathan's eyes just got really wide there for a second. He's like, I thought I was out. I thought I was out. <laughs> the trauma. Uh, right. Jonathan, you you answered, did you answer her phone call? Is that why this is happening, Jonathan? <laughs> Jonathan did you, you answer their first. call? Uh, no. Yeah, you <laughs> high or low? I'll go low this time. I'll go high. I'll go low. Okay. Okay. Alex, you yeah. are at the bar, chilling, enjoying <laughs> yourself, still reminiscing a little bit about the events of last year. And while, like, you've definitely moved on in the sense of, like, you know, writing the book and trying to make your life feel better, the horrors of what you saw that night still stick with you, of just, like, seeing the bodies like that, seeing people transform like that. And out the corner of your eye, as you're drinking, you see the glint of blue come back into your eyes that was uh, in that faded night all those years back. And as soon as you notice that, the air goes still. It's quiet. And you're in the bar by yourself. There's nobody else here. Except, of course, the ghostly visage of one Alexa Pascala who comes That's over and sits by you at the bar <laughs> and and is crying. And she looks like, she doesn't look like her scarred self the last time you saw her. She looks like the beautiful version of herself that was in the uh, video that you saw that like pre-empted uh, her, uh, her art show. And she says, I thought they were my muse. 
my beauty. Now it's all gone. Thank you for oh telling them. Thank you for sharing them. I wish you luck. And then she fades, and as she fades, so does the hint of blue in your eyes, and you're back in the bar. Aww, drinking again. Lovely. And everything is everything is uh all good. Yeah, oh, Kaylee was oh, okay. Yep. They, That's why I, I don't know you, how, but they found me. Jonathan. That's why I waited huh? for you to say Jonathan. I don't know what is about you. <laughs> Jonathan, you are at home getting ready for the night. You are, you know, brushing your teeth, you're you're doing your facial routine, you're doing all the stuff, and you're you're just doing all the things. And like, you know, you get in the bed, everything's seeming very calm. As you lay, uh, like, unfortunately, excuse me, sleep is hard for you because every time you go to sleep, you always go back to those paintings that you saw, the trauma that came from like even experiencing that and all the horrors that come with that. And as you're thinking about that, even though you can't see it, the blue in your eyes, that hint of blue comes back and you find yourself in your, like uh, in a nightmare reflective of that dream, reliving it over and over and over again. Every time you wake up, you go back to that same place, dealing with that same trauma over and over again. And finally you do wake up for the uh, final time. And things are different. The main thing is that your surroundings look similar, but it's no longer your house. Instead, you realize that you are on the operating table of the examination room, strapped down, unable to move, with the alien over top of you (laughs) with his saw. And he clicks it open. And your screams echo out through the halls of the alien spaceship. Damn. Kaylee. Dang. R.I.P. <laughs> buddy. <laughs> you are walking down the street, enjoying some time with friends, having a okay, good time. Okay, I don't believe this already. Again, doomsday <laughs> prepper bunker here. <laughs> no, I am not walking down the street, sir. You came out for your birthday. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we can be possibly. Yeah, All right, fair Just enough. Come out for your fair birthday. Enough. I'm I'm meeting Alex at the bar for my birthday. <laughs> my one friend. Actually, sure, that's <laughs> it. You and Alex are both friend. walking down the street, unbeknownst that Jonathan has Alex. been abducted again. And you and <laughs> yeah. Alex are walking. Alex is telling you and about her experience with Alexa in the bar prior, and uh, you're both. Uh, just like reminiscing, like trying to forget the uh, the night's events a year ago, and unfortunately, your conver- conversation gets cut short as two tentacles wrap around your body and drag you into a nearby alley. Alex chases after you, and what she finds is that Kaylee, you have been pulled over, but not by the alien. No, you've been pulled by the rem- like what like the mutated remnants of what is Salvador who has grabbed you and is slowly sliming over you as he then proceeds to use his weird mouth that has come at the top of his head to start eating your insides. And as you try to crawl away, you (laughs) crawl away with only your torso left halfway trying to get to Alex. But of course, Salvador has his tentacles and he pulls you back and continues to eat you as Alex runs away in fear. Let's know. Dang. Credits roll. Fahrenheit blue. <laughs> <laughs> then Alex then Alex has to live with survivor's remorse. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. You just killed Kaylee in front of me like I tried, that. Wow. I tried to meet my two my two only friends at the bar for my birthday. And this is how it goes. <laughs> then you had her half body coming at me. I mean, <laughs> I will say me. I I never liked you, Salvador. As soon as you were like, we need to get out of here. And then he just left. <laughs> Rude. I wanted this one to be more horror movie. Because the last one was more like thriller. This one was, this is more horror movie. Yeah. Gore fest yeah. horror movie. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
and that's Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit Blue. Role playing yeah. games, sci fi horror, horror, like very Lovecraft. Told you I survived this time. You did survive yeah. this time. That's true. What, did you you like, die last time. She died. I last died because I helped yeah. people. Because everybody was giving me shit, and I was just chilling oh, on myself. Funny. And they're like, "You know how to kill them?" And I was like, "Fine, I'll help." And I, I it always die. Them. Oh, I'm two for two. That's true. All right, like, John, this is Jonathan's first time <laughs> dying. No, he did die this time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think at the after witnessing my death. Uh, Alex finally learns her lesson and never goes anywhere without her badass sword. <laughs> so cops might pull me over for that. Yeah, you probably like had it hung up like a cool katana situation, and now no, you it needs to be on your person all times. A little bit, yeah, yeah. Yep. But did you guys have fun? Have fun? Yeah, you know, fun. your own personal yeah. horror movie. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoyed it. I've always dreamt of that. Mostly it's for <laughs> nightmares, but it has been a technically a form of dream. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad yeah. you had a good time. I'm glad it was fun. It was suspenseful. It was horrifying. Uh <laughs> it was like Come it was up low audience. Do you, did did who do you expect it to survive survive? <laughs> 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 I do, do you think well, if you were in this oh, sorry, apologize to Jonathan real fast for playing against you like that with the high and low yeah. <laughs> I, I do feel I bad feel now like I, was, a form of survivors I, I do feel bad I feel like the real lesson of this game was we should all apologize to Jonathan yeah. <laughs> Jonathan sorry, did buddy. get the like worst luck lo- like the alien literally that was rough the, the alien by chance just kept always going to where Jonathan was. I felt bad because I was like, God dang, Jonathan yeah. can't escape. But he did. He did twice. Although it's a good thing you guys didn't keep going back to the examination room because for some reason the dice kept wanting the alien to hang out there. So he was there for most of the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling uh, you, yeah. You, you to gotta do. head out of there. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I guess we leave now. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> also, since I don't know when I'm gonna do this next or whatever, the secret of the wine stuff is that uh, Alexa was, uh, I'm sure you can pick up, Alexa was abducted once before, and uh, she escaped, but she took with her some fluid, some of that fluid that was in the, um, the tank, and messed around with it, and put it in the wine, thinking that, you know, having it would mutate like have like drinking some of it would mutate her on her escape though like in her uh testing on it though she tested on animals and one of them mutated into a creature that clawed up her face which is where her scars come from and uh so she worked on it and made it better which is why she was gone for so long before like unveiling her paintings and so uh she she infused some of the fluid in her paintings and in the wine which is why those who drank the wine had hallucinogenic uh, reactions to the paintings, and those who, and if you hadn't drank the wine, you would have seen just regular paintings, and nothing would have happened. Hmm. I feel like now every time I go to like an art museum, I'm gonna really question like the, <laughs> the twenty one and up policy. <laughs> Seattle I'm going to really museum. question if I want to drink. They offer, and they offer you through. wine out of yeah. nowhere. <laughs> I was yeah. going to hard li- Seattle Art Is it like museum. a hard liquor only situation or is it just wine? Like we need to you stop never trust fast. wine. I feel like wine's always suspicious. Wine's always <laughs> getting suspicious feel. But I was going to say Seattle Art Museum is free after every Thursday of the first every week yeah. of the first month. So it is free this Thursday. Maybe go enjoy some wine there. Yeah, I think there you have to sneak it in, though. Don't be caught. <laughs> Put it in a bag. <laughs> I, don't, I think that makes it more suspicious. Carry it around, around like a Franzia, like no, no, no. Like I like it's a little. You get oh, a little like pouch, in the actual little pouches. Yeah, oh. little like, the pouches. And then you put it in your jacket, so you just. <laughs> just doing like a little sniff check. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just yeah, don't don't mind me. I'm just casually shrugging my shoulders so I can drink out of my bag no, liquor. No. But yeah, that's Fahrenheit Blue. Uh, 
Hope you all had a great time listening and had a great time playing. Uh, can't wait to do this again sometime. Uh, just a little preamble of the one I was going to do if we had uh, everybody uh, attend. Uh, that one was going to be called Disco of Death. Ooh, I want to be there for that. Hell yeah. Sounds fun. So, excited Sounds to do like Disco of Death time. eventually one day uh, when we get around to it. Uh, but uh, socials. <laughs> Alex, where can people find you? You can find me at Alex and Nobody on Instagram and on TikTok, as well as the First Ones to Die podcast TikTok, where I show little clips of episodes we have done, uh, things we may do, uh, as well as show you little clips of the movies we or shows we are reviewing. So come join me over there. What about you, Jonathan? You can find me at Jonathan Keys on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you please. You can follow us at The First Ones to Die on all your favorite social media platforms. You can email us, the first ones to die at gmail.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast uh, feed, um, please give us five stars and a rating and review. We would very much appreciate it. Jerome, where can people find you? You can find me at not Jerome Rent on Instagram as well as uh, checking out the YouTube channel for the first ones to die, in which you can find all of us video versions of the podcast, and of course, many reviews, book reviews, gaming content, other stuff that you cannot get on the audio streaming platform. So go on over there. Excuse me, check that out. <laughs> the ginger rail has just been coming up the whole episode. It's kind of been a little annoying, but <laughs> go on over there to the YouTube channel. And check out all of our content. There's some great stuff up there. More stuff coming on the way. And uh, you're not going to want to miss any of it. And if you are watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. And uh, you know, ring the notification bell so that you can uh, be updated when stuff is coming out. Because you don't want to miss anything. And all this podcast goodness. And as far as things happening in, in uh, you know, the live action world, go and check us out at the Laser Dome. And that by us, I mean me. Uh, for Juneteenth, <laughs> we're doing Laser Missy Elliott and Laser Run the Jewels one night only, folks. So go get your tickets for that if you're listening to this and you're in the Seattle area. It's going to be a fun time. The show's going to be done by yours truly. So if you just want to stop by and say hi, that's also welcome as well. Kaylee, where can people find you? Oh, uh, I'm on Instagram at uh, K.E. Dombowski. That's a fun last name to spell. So good <laughs> luck with it. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> Tune in next week for something. We don't quite know yet, but we'll, we'll let you know once the, once it comes out, but until then have a good night, good morning, good evening, whenever you're listening to this and we will catch you for the next one. Bye. 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 Go on over to the YouTube channel at the first ones to die to see all the fun stuff we got going on here, like mini reviews, book reviews, gaming videos, blogs, all types of stuff. Please follow us at the first ones to die everywhere. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. 